Preparation Fund. Each land has a story, the struggle towards independence, the evolution of civilization, the entrance of Western influence, and other ongoing and future occurrences of events that become a story that will forever be remembered. Each story could create a, a change in a society and fade it into a history, or it can leave a mark that never uh, leaves a uh, page to an individual. Joining us, we have six artists from Stories Across Rising Lands exhibition, Lim Kokun from Malaysia, Maharani Mancanegara from Indonesia, Nolai from Myanmar, Sulia Pumifong from Lao, and an artist duo, Tan Botai uh, from Cambodia, and Sinta Wibobo from Belgium. The curators of the exhibition, Asep Topan and Jong Ok John, will be moderating this program today. So Asep is the curator at Museum Machan. He graduated with a Bachelor in Printmaking from Institut Kesenian Jakarta and a Master's in Curatorship from Institut Teknologi Bandung. He is also a recipient for the, the, the Apple Curatorial Program in the Netherlands. Asep is also a lecturer at Institut Kesenian Jakarta. Ms. Jung Ok is a South Korean independent curator that has been living and working in Jakarta since 2012. With interest in new media and interactive art, Ms. Jung Ok has curated several science and technology-based and art exhibitions. Currently, she serves as the director at Arcolabs and a full-time lecturer at Visual Art Education Department of Jakarta State University. So without further ado, over to you, Asep and Ms. Jung Ok. Uh, thank you very much, Widi, for the introduction, uh, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and also good morning to Sinta, and also maybe good evening for uh, everybody who are in the different location, different uh, time uh, uh, setting, and uh, welcome to the Stories Across Rising Lands, Artists and Curators Discussion. Uh, this is one of the public program for the exhibition Stories Across Rising Land at Museum Machan, and I'm happy that I can meet you all, uh, maybe for some of us uh, again, uh, although virtually, and I uh, hope you are staying safe and healthy to this time. Uh, and as Widi mentioned, uh, I'm cu uh, curating this exhibition with uh, together with Jong Ok, and I would like to give you a brief introduction to the exhibition. Um, so Stories Across Rising Land is a contemporary art exhibition that presents artwork from, uh, by artists from Southeast Asia with variety of media such as painting, installation, video art, and photography. The artwork covers diverse topics, including migration histories, labor, environment, and the position and role of women in society. Uh, and about the title, the word rising lands in the title refers to the area of Southeast Asia where development and changes in their society are apparent to the other side of the world. And at the same time, contemporary art seen within the region have made its dynamic presentation to the world. Uh, so lands are rising in the sense that uh, this dynamic in terms of society, politics, cultures, and art are gaining more attention. In this exhibition, we can see artworks by artists, including Chian Dairit from the Philippines, Horui An from Singapore, Kawita Fatana Jiankur from Thailand, Saleh Hussein from Indonesia, Lim Kok Kiong from Malaysia, Sulia Fomipong from Laos, Maharani Manchanagara from Indonesia, Ngelai from Myanmar, and a collaboration between Tan Watai from Cambodia and Sinta Wibowo from Belgium. Stories Across Rising Land, commissioned by Connect ASEAN and supported by the ASEAN Republic of Korea Cooperation Fund. Um, before we begin the artist presentation, uh, please in, be informed that uh, there will be uh, time for Q&A and the, at the end of the session. You are very much uh, encouraged to leave comment or question in the Q&A function at the bottom of this Zoom platform during the presentation. Please write, uh, starting with your name, the name of the artist that you are asking to and your question. Each artist will present for five minutes uh, discussing on the inspiration of the artistic practice. Uh, and then uh, maybe before we start, I just want to make sure to see, uh, to. Uh, with Dia uh, as an MC, uh, do, are we going to have another uh, introduction before we start? Hello, Widi. Oh, sorry, I forgot to unmute. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah, introduction of the artist. Yeah, sure. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I mean, uh, there, there will be. Uh, I see on this timeline here about the. Uh, 
sorry let me i think you you need to uh uh i think you said that you will play a video, a video before oh no oh no okay no. okay okay sorry sorry for that and uh, yeah i think we can start um We can start uh, the presentation or sharing session uh, with each artist, and I will pass the time to the first presenter, Lim Kok Kyung uh, from Malaysia. Uh, Kok Kyung, the screen is yours. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, um, thanks, uh, Asad, for the introduction. Uh, I'll start by. Um, uh, introducing the work that I'm um, uh, exhibiting in the, the uh, story across the land. Uh, the title of my piece is called License to Wait. Uh, it's actually a very old work of mine, uh, dated back to 2005 or six. I can remember. Yeah, it was actually a, a, a site-specific uh, installation uh, that I conceptualized for a small gallery in UK when I was studying in UK. Um, um, I, was, uh, I was very much uh, inspired by the aesthetics of, uh, of waiting and these surprises um, uh, that, that these people, uh, right, the British people, the UK people that like uh, uh, fishing yeah, along the river. So it was a very beautiful scene for me. And um, um, I want to do something uh, with the space in the gallery. So it happened that this uh, gallery, uh, there was a river running uh, beside the gallery. Yeah. So I asked for a ladder to climb up to the, the, the windows and I saw uh, people were actually fishing along the river. So I want to do something about the space. I want to change people's perception about the space. Yeah. Um, and when I asked uh, the, uh, for the uh, technicality of doing it, the first thing that I come across was I was told to register myself as an angler. Yeah, I need to get a license to fish in UK. So that was quite absurd and uh, surreal, but uh, somehow, you know, I, I, I thought that's, that's, that's uh, equally, you know, absurd and surreal as our life. So... Um, uh, 15 years on until today. So this waiting moment is, is rather cliche now. It's in everywhere you go, you know, you need to you need to you need to wait, especially in the COVID situation right, right now. You need to get to wait for your your turn to actually come up to the cash flow. Yeah, you need to wait for your temperature to be taken and you are waiting for an unknown. So back then it's 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 you know it um I, I was in the same situation, you know, where um you know um um, I was when I was conceptualizing this work. Um, I was also thinking about the ex, uh, existence. So it's just timely that you know it's a, in the global pandemic. You know, it's it's nothing. It's no time more time, more more appropriate to think about existence now, today, right? So um, I was when uh, in the original piece, I was also proposed proposing to enrich you know, the, the theorization and also researching on organizing the space uh, with the, within the notion of spacing in, inside the gallery, yeah? So the organization of space sort of uh, suggests the rethinking of a space as a place where you can uh, open, uh, uh, as, as an open-ended and, and ended space that allows uh, multiple activities and attitude. And uh, most importantly, I want, I, I want people to consider everyday practice um, to be as artistic and artful as they can imagine, yeah. Um, in line with uh, Alan Kapoor's theory of um, a life as art and art as life, yeah. So the the daily practice organized in in everyday life um, uh, in in many different ways. Uh, this kind of practice they they it constitutes a body of knowledge, yeah? a knowledge uh, very peculiar to a specific community or organizations like a fishing community, a cycling community. You know, they, they, they are in a way, it's is, is, is a knowledge community for me. Yeah? They have very interesting things to share. It's just that most of the time, these cases are not 
classified all right, uh, as art or even as a knowledge domain. Yeah, but this, this kind of activities are filled everyday life with meaning and symbolism. So when I was approached by the curator, uh, Asep and Jongo, uh, they asked if I can actually react, reenact this piece. I thought it's, it's, it's a timely, you know, it's timely for, for me to reenact this piece and, um, uh, and, and sort of uh, bring people into this uh, very reflective space where they can think about their current pretty Cayman you know, their current situations in the uh, COVID uh, situation. So that was a very brief uh, contextual information of the piece. So I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over back to the MC. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Kokyong. Uh, you're very, very on time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, of <laughs> course, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, to discuss. Uh, for sure, and we will continue in the uh, discussion uh, session after uh, all the presentation. And now okay. um, I will give the opportunity to Tan Watai and also Sinda Wibowo to share uh, uh, the presentation. Watai, okay. uh, the so, Yeah, and yeah, um, I'm, I'm on the island now, and I wanted to share the my uh, living experience just four weeks ago. So I returned from uh, Belgium and the, the government uh, put a new restriction because the, a wife of a minister went shopping and spread, spread over the community. So uh, everyone who entered Cambodia had to stay in the um, government quarantine center or the hotel in cooperation. So, so it was my tiny home for two weeks. And uh, with the share large roof with uh, 100 people inside. So there are four buildings. So it's about 400 people in total. And there's no door. And I got to live with, uh, yeah, there's some babies and a pregnant lady at, at that night. She was like, still want to deliver baby. And then we sent her to the ambulance immediately, but not maybe not doesn't want to go out here yet. So a lot of things happened there and I met uh, a lot of uh, Cambodian who went abroad to work like Malaysia, Korea, US and got to know their story, uh, why they are back or why they go. And, and we, we got to know each other, especially my neighbor who, who stay, who came with the same flight. So, be a bit closer and we start to become friends by taking care of each other, like sharing food uh, that our family, family or friend can send into uh, through the police, but we cannot send out, you know. And at the time they have a, a, a fry, fry noodles and uh, they share to me and then, okay, I also want to offer you my fruit, I, two meal fruit and two mangoes. And they're so happy. So this type of exchange and happening and also uh, uh, my luggage become a, a table for working, for doing uh, art or, or can fry my egg sometimes. And also invite my neighbors to, to uh, try my art materials there. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's my uh, bed number 1109. And, yeah, it's it's really interesting that uh, I feel like uh, wow, the first few days I feel it's so a bit difficult to live there, and then every day I start to adapt and uh, try to be with that situation. Like I had to check the shower head before I uh, took off my clothes, otherwise gonna have a problem again, something like. That. And uh, we got a uh, uh, how to say compliment from the nurse with the announcement like, oh, this today building uh, A, building core, uh, uh, clean very well, hygiene, and everyone said, yeah, we're doing good. This, and that's so why I feel like, oh, I feel like we are living in a, a school with a dorm or something. And yeah, and uh, uh, one week later, and you can go to the next uh, uh, photo and when we later, I arrived, uh, I got invitation to join a, 
uh, application with the program that also uh, uh, help the hotel to be alive in other ways during this COVID time with the uh, uh, art activity or, or exchange that it's also uh, with the local community and the crew here, they feel really uh, important and, and uh, the moment that they can uh, feel the, because the exercise that I offer, it's more uh, to get to know the, your inner side and inner self and especially the surrounding with the water. So we did the exercise like uh, be water and mix with the guests and uh, the crew and the uh, hotel owner kids. And we got to know, uh, and also the school. I also, uh, we did with the school. So uh, we had to go by, bo by boat everywhere and it's so difficult to have, uh, ex difficult and expensive to have electricity here. So sometimes we have to cut off the electrics uh, uh, by 11. So, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's really contrast uh, my, my life in, in just one month. Before I was like 100 people and no door. And now I have like, I'm living on a floating log and, uh, alone but also a lot of connection with the team and well taking care yeah so uh thank you for this yeah thank you what i uh actually it's very interesting to see your background in the rural setting as uh, we, we we see all of us almost i think all of us inside the room uh, with the wall behind uh, it's very, it's very refreshing to see that, that background. Thank you very much, uh, Watai. And uh, I will let uh, Sinta continue. Uh, yeah, Sinta. Hi. So when Machan asks us to share what stories impacted um, our lives uh, and maybe how it changed the way I work, I guess uh, meeting, meeting Watai, who you just heard speaking, was one of those moments and uh, when we became partners in life, but also in, in work. That was maybe like 2017. And actually it was already 20 years since I started working in, in the arts, which was in 97. I guess I went into the arts um, to explore a variety of ways of thinking, of feeling, of looking at the world and being with life. Uh, so change I feel was a constant. Um, and this is actually giving you a peek in how shift happened for me. So how, when I'm stuck, I try to shift and find other ways. And this image actually uh, keeps changing, yeah, and uh, growing over time. So let me share another big shift. What was when I was meeting uh, Andy van der Vivere, and we met uh, together and organized the Sideways Walking Arts Festival in 2012. It became, um, it was a time after the financial crisis in 2008, when the whole world became like full on capitalist, hyper mobile and into a higher speed of living. And the art scene actually too, so this festival was proposing a walking experience uh, that was co-created by artists and uh, by local people. Basically, we took time or we even stopped time for going on a one month long stroll with artists, researchers, activists, also a nine month old baby. And uh, we even brought a, a donkey with us, Kaladaya uh, in Bahasa. Uh, and everyone who wanted to join was welcome. So. We were exploring pathways. I'm just gonna ask you to uh, move back to the other uh, image so that people can think about the shifts uh, again. And we were just exploring pathways, um, these little roads for walkers where cars cannot go. Um, and on foot, we crossed the whole country of Belgium, which you can actually cross in two, three hours by car. But now we gave ourselves 30 days, 30 days of just being present can you shift to the other um, picture again? Yeah, just being present with our surroundings, starting from uh, a border town between France and Belgium, passing by villages, urban places, suburban places, the airport, forests, military domains, wastelands, the capital of Brussels, and yeah, all the way up to the Netherlands. So all our living conditions and working conditions changed, right? We were nomadic, not at home, 
we were never so much outdoors and we were never such uh, in, in so much movement. So when your body moves, it also easier to move the mind and have different thoughts and perspectives. We were trying out different ways and uh, realizing that each way goes, actually. We were listening to people's stories at campfires. We set up every evening, uh, tell them what happened during the day with us and just relax together. We just tried to doing things differently for like 360 kilometers long. Um, I think an, uh, a journalist called me up and asked like, hey, sorry, Sinta, I, I'm, maybe I'm not so smart, but I don't really get what you're all doing. And I told her like, yeah, that's the point. Do not know, to get lost and see where we end up. Also being fine with not knowing and just being with what happens. It's not an examination or there are no points to score. So I always had many questions, but it was sideways that questioned me and actually forced me to work differently. So those different conditions from working in the black box, in the white cube or on site specific festivals just blew me out of my box, right? And made me move out of conventions, out of my habits into other different ways. And because Sideways was uh, such an amazing um, experience, it helped me coming out of my tunnel and seeing that there's a whole horizon of possible paths. I wanted my work also to give other people that experience. And I guess that could happen more in the collaborations with uh, that what Thay and I started to do with workshops. So workshops with walking called Watch and Wonder and the series of reenacting memories that was a new work that here we also made in Machan. And yeah, so this is actually um, what I proposed and we can go and look at the donkey again. This donkey was called Don Quixote. You could see for the next slide that he is equipped with a GPS tracker. The blue thing on his back is a um, uh, device also to, to check pollution in, in, uh, in the area that we work together with uh, a university together. And we documented through him was really a social hub, everything online. So people from far away could just join us also, like people here now in COVID times are also joining us online. Yeah, that was it. Thank you very much, Sinta. I think it's it's very fascinating uh, process that you explained and we can discuss a little bit more uh, after the presentation. Uh, and then I will give time to uh, Ngelai uh, for now. So Ngelai, uh, you can start now. Thank you. Ah uh, yes, hello everyone. So good afternoon. So thank you to uh, I. I have a chance to to present my work. So my I cannot uh, present because my PC cannot contact the, this time because the connection is very slow. So uh, my. Title of work is the endless story and urban story in this time. So uh, my work represents the difference between the past and present time. So I'm I'm one of my hobbies. I'm interested in to collect the old photograph, and then also I record the present time. So that's why I always try to compare the old photograph and the the recent photograph. So. This time, I, that word is I was created in 2012. And uh, another one I was created in Cambodia in 2016. And then another one was in Georgia last uh, 2019. So uh, um, and this word did uh, in Yumer when I was uh, in 2012, so I, I collected Send images from the old antique shop and send are from my relatives. And then also send images uh, about the, the building in Myanmar. They are still in Myanmar now, but uh, the, the environment and the some a little bit changes. So that's why I created that work. And then also, I think the last one images, I, I was. Yes, that one. So this is the 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 same building in in my uh, walk, and then also I compare yesterday's things. So a bit different. So my this part of my walk is that I I I really would like to show how differences between past and uh, present. Uh, 
so now this tie, this is the city hall in Yango. So this tie, nobody not allowed to cross in that land right now. Because today also uh, a lot of changes in this uh, environment because the, the, a lot of the police and soldiers, they, they stop in that road right now. So uh, I'm so excited right now because <laughs> every day I was much. And then also at the night we are like uh, we have to waiting what happened in in the night, so that's why maybe uh, I cannot explain not so much where if I cannot say if I cannot explain not so where so please uh, forgive me. <laughs> so uh, uh, I should I say sorry sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah. Hello. Yeah. yeah. I, I, sorry. I, sorry. I get lost there first. Yes. 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 Because the connection is not stable. No yeah. Yes. So I, I think that's all of my present because I right now I cannot see not so well. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. Uh, we will have yeah. uh, another uh, session to discuss a little bit more. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. yes. not only about the work that uh, you presented in the museum, but as we are uh, all are aware, uh, the current situation uh, in, in Myanmar is, is, is very much problematic and uh, we would like to hear more as well as uh, from uh, uh, for, from your point of view as an artist and also maybe the artist community in, in the Myanmar. Yeah, thank you, Eli. And uh, now we can continue to um, Maharani Mancanegara. Maharani, uh, the screen is yeah. yeah. Okay, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Maharani Mancanegara. I live and work in Bandung, Indonesia. Thank you so much, Asep. Jong Ok and also Museum Machan team for arranging this exhibition. So I will share some of my background story behind my latest work that exhibit in stories across rising lands. Uh, slide one. Uh, for the past years, my work were inspired by my late grandfather's diary, whom I never met. There's a lot of interesting parts, but one thing that caught my attention is the period of detainee on the Pulau Island around 66 to 77. Uh, let me flashback first about what happened and what caused that period by the perspective of the government. So the political upheaval of uh, 65 occurred that caused an event that took place after the night of September 30 until the beginning of October 1st, when seven high-ranking Indonesian military officers, along with several people, others were killed in a coup attempt, following the massacre of people accused of being communists and arrested, and even called 30 September or G38 or Gestapo or Gestok. There was an attack against civilians, uh, that is PKI or Indonesian Communist Party, and those alleged to be its leader, member, or another organization that might be intersect with the party. People accused of being part of the party or any organization that related to the party were arrested. Some of them were arrested and imprisoned, some of them were detained in Buru Island more than 11,000 people and some of them were killed. And I live and grew up in the new order era around the 60, uh, 90s, uh, where the event of the G38 were only allowed to be studied according to the government fashion. Even from uh, the family, no one told me about it because the condition at that time would be dangerous for anyone who spoke or spread the news about G38, even other than a uh, government version until I found uh, my family archive about the event from a family perspective as a trigger. Uh, my grandfather was arrested and taken without a trial or notified of his guilt to a prison in Surabaya, uh, Koblen prison and also Kalisoso prison, then transferred to Nusa Kambangan prison and finally to Blue Island along with the other political prisoner about, for about uh, more than 10 years. So next slide. Uh, I did a tracing trips and tracing through interview of survivors, as well as gather archives to reconstruct a family figure that I had never met. 
uh, this finding story part, the understanding of the G30S that I learned at school. For me, it's uh, this story is important to get it right. Yeah, at least for myself. On the left image uh, in Surabaya, I met Mr. Wihin Lee, uh, one of the survivors who was arrested in Malang. He was also transferred to Surabaya at Koblen Prison. The, that's the prison uh, picture. The same place as my grandfather. Uh, I hope with tracing it, I could know more about my grandfather uh, and also gain another perspective of what happened in the past. Uh, and uh, Right image is the work on display in stories across Trising Land is part of the Hikayat Wanatan Trum series uh, from my solo exhibition in 2018. Uh, this Wanatan Trum story is an initial trigger for the reconstruction of events in the past using a folklore approach as a medium to tell something that was banned from the public. The title itself is Hikayat means uh, tale, Wana means forest, and Tantrum means peace. So it's a story about the peace forest or uh, peace island. The storyline is about the journey of uh, some mouse deer that is kidnapped to an island by uh, pirates, some pirates, and then they find a strategy to survive uh, and return to their place of origin with the help of a frigate bird. Uh, I developed with the metaphor of characterizing of the G30S uh, events in a simple way, so that is easily understood by all age. Uh, this work is presented in various new, uh, version, storybooks, uh, two-dimensional uh, puppets, and three-dimensional puppets to be played in the performance. So I think that's all for the introduction about my work in stories across the rising lands. Thank you, Maharani. Uh, and then we will uh, continue to the last uh, presentation from uh, Sulia uh, from Rao. Sulia, you can start now. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you to have me here. So, yeah, <laughs> I am uh, the Buffalo Man. So, it's talking about the <laughs> see. <laughs> so you you. You okay to, to, to hear me, right? Because the in, internet in, in here is not so good. Okay? Yeah. So uh, I, actually I, be, I become to the, the Buffalo Man from 11 years ago. Before that, I, I do the, the painting. So I created from the, in the painting. So, and then I, can you show the Buffalo picture? The Buffalo one? No, the another one. The, okay, so this this picture, I I try to uh, go around the the country and uh, try to take the picture of the the land about the buffalo, about the cow, or everything that uh, is used to 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 my life. And after I I do this project, this one the the picture is for pain, is not for the, the sculpture. And then just a few months after I, I do this, it's not yet go to painting or not yet go to any, any art yet, but I got surprised by the Japan Foundation. They, they give me the funding to go to Tokyo. So this is my first time to go out from the country. So <laughs> after that, I go to Tokyo. So that the first image I remember when I go to the top of the the building. Can you show the another one? Basically, the picture. Okay. So you have to imagine that I come from the, you know, very countryside. Actually, Lao is also the, the low developed at that time. And the first image when I go to Tokyo, this is what is this? This is the like, you know, the concrete forest. I never have seen something like this before for my life. And, you know, from the Buffalo right field, go to the big concrete city. And I just thinking like, I have nothing there. No one know about Lao, no one know about me. They, they, they know Lao as a part of Thailand. Some people know Lao as a part of Vietnam. Some people know Lao as a part of China. So, I am, we are in the between of those countries, but they don't know we are, uh, we are Lao, I am Lao. 
when I talk to the people, they 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 very loud, very 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 loud. <laughs> okay, so at, and at that time, I I just got the the idea about why they I have the answer. You know, when I was born until I was 26 years old, I know my government is the best. The the you know. <laughs> You already know, right, about my system in Lao, but I don't want to talk here. <laughs> okay, so I just know only only one way for my life. And then when I go outside and I see the freedom of thinking of the people in, in Japan, I meet many people in, in there and I just thinking like, oh, maybe I have to do something more than paint. You know, I do the painting for five years. I know art is only the painting. And at that time, I, I just felt like when I do the painting, they just say, oh, it's nice painting, it's good, so yeah. And that's it. And then I, I start, okay, I use the symbolic of the buffalo from Lao to become the very tiny buffalo in this side and go to journey in the big city in Tokyo. And at that time, it the turning point for me to, to stop painting. Really, I stopped my pain in the year 2010 and do the sculpture of the buffalo, you know. And when I get back to Laos, uh, I think Thai, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, we have the, the same meaning. I, I'm not sure about the, the buffalo. If the people call you buffalo, does that mean stupid, right? Yeah, that's the, the meaning. So when I came back to to Lao and I, I continue my my uh, my concept work. Everyone they laughing. Everyone, even my good friend, <laughs> my family, they 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 talk to me like, oh, you are crazy. If you know you will be crazy like this, we don't send you to the art school. They just say like like that. And the teacher and everyone say, hey, why don't you continue your painting? You have a good talent about watercolor and the art acrylic. And I just think, why I have to follow that? Because I, I have to open my mind. I want to do something new. It's not just only follow the thing that I have learned from the beginning until now, 11 years for, for do the art with the pain. And, and I start to do that. And I don't know, for, for the beginning, in Lao, it's very difficult to, to show the, the work like, uh, uh, how to say, because the people know here it's just the sculpture and, and the painting. When the first time I showing my buffalo, well, you have to imagine that many people, they interest in the work, but it's not mean they, they like it. They just want to, to uh, they were thinking the people, the high people will, will say something with my buffalo. Like, oh, maybe Suya is stupid, like the buffalo because he, he can work he made a very small sculpture with the buffalo a lot. But finally, I met the one guy from Singapore. He liked it. He like, hey, this is a, the very new thing I never have seen in this country, the, the installation work with the sculpture. And then I, I found that, okay, if you have, uh, if you brave to, to do something new out from out from the, 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 the old thing that you used to, sometimes you will get, not sometimes, I mean, of course they, they will look at you like a stranger, but if you keep going and keep going, one day they, you will become something and be, become the meaning of that society. Like a, now they call me the Buffalo Man, but I don't want to translate in love because if you translate in love, it's very, it's very strong word to say to the people, you know. And for the for the work uh, that show in this exhibition, uh, I I found that at that time in the beginning, I want to show that buffalo is not the stupid animal. Love is not stupid. We just don't have the chance to to go out to learn to to exchange the, the new culture with the other people, with the other country. So that make uh, the outside people look at us like, hey, you very poor, you very low education, you very stupid. But those, uh, but that buffalo, I mean, the, the first one in Japan is show them 
if I can have a chance to go to your country, I can have a chance to learn. So I can be the new thing come to come back to my to my place. But in flow, it's the opposite. So I used because when 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 I came back, I I try to you know it's more than seven year or eight year. I try to uh, uh, express this kind of idea to the new generation in school because I am now I am teaching at our school and no one interested in my work, even my, my student. They just want to ask just one question. They always ask you if you teaching art and they will say, if we do the buffalo, if we do another work, then the painting or sculpture, how can we survive? How can we make the money? This is the question I have to answer my student every time, every year when I start the class. And I found that Nowadays, because Lao, uh, we open the we open the country and a lot, a lot of Chinese come, you know, <laughs> a lot of uh, big project, the makeup project come to the country. But uh, the knowledge of the people, I mean, the local people is not so high. The developing is too fast. Now we have uh, many big uh, department store, many high building. So, and soon the end of this year, the, the the high speed trend will come. But the people still do the right fail, still don't have enough money to survive, you know. <laughs> but the new generation is not. The new generation, they don't care about how poor they are, how poor their family. They just want to be like the other people in the high society uh, country. Like the, they want to have iPhone, they want to have the new clothes, they want to have a new car. Even they don't have money, but they will try to sell their land, sell their things, sell everything that they can get the money to buy that. So that is the idea for uh, making the, a lot of the buffalo following in the circle. Because if you don't know well about yourself, this is my idea, you will become the buffalo. You know, buffalo is very big, but it's easy for the people to, to control. Okay, I want you to, to do something like this, want to do something like this. So, and in the society, we have a lot uh, different kind of people. Some is good people, some is poor, some is rich, but they also the buffalo. <laughs> this is for my idea. <laughs> you know, I cannot say anything much like this in the exhibition in Laos because they will, I don't know how, how to say, maybe they, some people, they, they will think I, I uh, uh, compare about my work to the people in the society, but that is just for the symbolic. Because if you follow each other, don't, don't think about the, the, the true thing that you have, that symbolic will become to you. So if you see the work at the end, you will see the, the, the buffalo in the middle, the first one, you see, no, no, no. I, I mean, in in the work, in in the in the video work. Ah, in the video work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you will see the, the the guy in the middle. So that is the. I think the the work itself is very easy to understand because when you jump to that society, you have to decide. You want to be this kind of buffalo, like like we watching now, or become yourself. So that is the 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 story behind the, the Buffalo work. But that one is just only the, the first uh, idea for, for the flow, you know? <laughs> thank you very much, Julia, for sharing. Yeah, thank you very much, Julia, for, for sharing us about the, uh, the idea of the work. Actually, it's, it's uh, very much related to my uh, experience as well, because I was born and raised in the countryside before I moved to Jakarta. So this Buffalo story summer will also bring back my childhood memories as well. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, now we have uh, heard all the presentation from the artists and uh, we can start the discussion. Uh, but before that, I would like to remind all the uh, participants uh, in this room that uh, you can uh, ask question in the Q&A uh, chat uh, here and then we will uh, we will 
uh, read the question to the to the to the artist, and then uh, now I will pass the time to Miss Jiang Ok to start the discussion. So Jiang Ok, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Ase. Um, hello, everyone. It is very nice meeting you all, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, after seeing the artist presentations. I was able to see how responsive uh, everyone is to the surroundings of our lives, uh, whether it is something very urgent situation that shifts our life day to day, especially at the moment, or it is just an event in the past that we cannot even remember after generation to generation. But undoubtedly, at the, I think what, what I see something that penetrates through all the artists' work or artists, uh, the artistic practice is like life and art or art and life are in a very close relation and also very close contact each other. So generally, um, as far as I understand, the artists expand their artistic development by gradually taking a deeper and broader approach in terms of concept and form which means that conceptually getting deeper, formally getting broader. And normally the artists also go through several different phases in their artistic life. And for Lim Kok Young, uh, you have also been through several different phases from your earlier period to the current uh, practice, which I understand is more based on cutting edge uh, technology and also you concentrate on new media arts. However, uh, in this exhibition, you showcased your earlier work that was created in 2005 because of the creator's uh, request. So in preparing uh, your work, uh, Kok Young, you had a chance to revisit to your earlier piece. So how is it like for you to retranslate and rearticulate the old piece into the different contexts of the current life situation from the Oceana framework? And what do you think was something very, very important uh, that you have to consider or you have to keep when you retranslate and uh, rearticulate it? Uh, thank you, Jungo, for the questions. <laughs> uh, very sophisticated questions. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I, I do appreciate this uh, opportunity very much uh, to allow me to revisit uh, a work that I conceptualized uh, many years ago. And, uh, but I believe uh, fundamentally um, the concept and also the, the kind of thinking behind the work uh, has not changed so much uh, despite the change of the form and also the, the choice of uh, medium um, because um, my, my practice, uh, regardless of the, the medium that I use in the presentation has always been revolving around the concept of time, um, mm -hmm. around the concept of uh, body. Yeah? Not so much about my own body, but uh, I always, uh, in, in a way, design an experience uh, that, um, I, that, that will force or put the audience in a situation uh, for them to think about their, their, their bodily situations yeah? in an existential mode, all right? What happened to your, uh, your body uh, in, in the past, uh, at the present moment, and also in the future, all right? Uh, if any of these uh, 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 flow and apps, you know, of, of, of uh, the changes around you, uh, change your perceptions, your senses, um, um, uh, uh, yeah, so um, that's why uh, when I was asked to choose uh, two images, yeah, I, 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 I choose an image of, um, uh, I, I mean, the, it was the, the piece of work was about the aesthetics of uh, uh, waiting. So one of it was actually, both of the image are, are images I downloaded from the internet. Yeah, so you can see that this, this uh, the, the, the line on the floor, you know, well, in, in the shopping malls were actually demarcated to different uh, a waiting line, right? Uh, 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 one meter apart. 
And that was like, um, I, I chose that image because it's that, that, that I create that as a timeline. Yeah, as a timeline uh, where you travel uh, between the past, the present, and also your future destinations. Right? So I, it's, it's parallel to an activities of uh, um, uh, uh, fishing. Right? Uh, because it's all about uh, uh, waiting. Yeah? And, and waiting is about forgetting what you are waiting for. Uh, but, you know, we have to, we have to uh, uh, deceive ourselves, deceive ourselves uh, so that we can forget um, the time um, while, we are, we are, while we are waiting, but uh, look forward to the future of uh, what is approaching. Yeah, so that's probably the philosophy of our uh, of, of life and probably the reason why we are doing, uh, regardless what you choose to do, uh, you do something yeah, uh, at the present moment to give life uh, a meaning and a reason. And I also like to highlight my own understanding of uh, uh, philosophy, right? For, for technology, it's, it's, it's just a medium. Yeah? Um, um, a pencil is also a technology, um, a modern technology at the time when it was invented. So are other uh, high-tech technology that we have invented today. So the only changes is a shift of time. So I'm actually interested uh, in, in that uh, shift. You know. Thank you, Jung -ho. Yeah, thank you very much for your very detailed and concrete explanation, <laughs> especially about uh, the concepts uh, of the time. And uh, since your work is interactive and we supposed to, so in the installation, there is a two sitting area where people can sit and wait uh, for the fish caught, perhaps they can even imagine. So actually what's, what is important in your installation is people has to not just think about the concept of time, but actually you invite the people to experience, sense the time, right? But hopefully we can have the, the, the audience uh, in, the, uh, in the gallery space so they can actually experience it. So, so um, it is just very simple. So now are uh, you already done revisiting your old work? So do you think that um, it's a, do you consider it's the same piece or you want to separate? So the license to wait 2005 version, but you have a same series, but license to wait for 2021. How do you, or you just um, say it's a same, same piece? Um, I, I would, I would think of this as, uh, an extension from mm. the, yeah, from the, the version license to wait version 1.0. This is an extension into a version, uh, 2.0. Uh, what has changed is, uh, the current situations, the current predicament that we are in. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, process, you know, when I deal with, uh, Jong Hok, uh, I, we, I can't literally travel because of the travel ban. So everything I have to be uh, dependent on the information that I can get from uh, Jomo uh, in terms of the environment, in terms of the local community. So we have explored a lot of possibilities, uh, including the sources, sourcing of the, you know, the wood material to construct the piece as well as I would like to do it uh, uh, in relations or in connections with the local community. But everything was done online yeah we have never met and come in contact physically so that is our our life now um so this this thing is really surreal and even now i can't even see my work uh, but I, I can miss i can only see it through the digital uh representation all right so that's that's although also another state of uh waiting i was waiting for this moment that i can uh, allowed to travel the state across the state and the sea to really come to see the stories of the rising land. Um, I think I, I I wouldn't see this as a different piece, but I see this as an extensions uh, extensions into a moment where we have to rely so much on the digital technology. That's why I choose to have uh, video projections instead of uh, actual site where people can fish. So I still want people to fish in that installation, but they are fishing across a different 
terrain of land. Now they are venturing into a virtual land. So just for your information, a lot of those uh, uh, footages are video footages that I've collected. Uh, most of them are related to water uh, because I like this idea of um, uh, uh, primordial soup, right? They, uh, there was a concept where the sea was the source of life. So everything comes from there. So I want people to actually think far ahead into an ancient type where there was no life, but it was the beginning of life. Uh, yes, because of the limitation of the physical mobility, yeah? uh, me as a creator, I felt like uh, I was like medium or mediator of the whole the process of your creation. Right. So I'm very happy that I was part of your creation. But since we just thank you so much, uh, Kuk Young, since you just talk about the physical mobility, which is very limited at this moment. Um, in fact, uh, before the pandemic, artists uh, live like a nomad. Uh, when, when we think of the artists, we, we think of the artists uh, as a, somebody who can freely travel around the world, right? Mm -hmm. One of the most popular ways for the artists uh, to explore new ideas or new experience could be by participating in an artist in residence program. So now I like to uh, move my talk to Vati uh, Wattai, Vati Wattai, uh, because Vati uh, Wattai is now actually joining a residency program in Cambodia. And I just wonder, Vati, uh, how is it like? And you've been traveling a lot, oh, even Bandung or Indonesia or even Burma in the US, uh, you have participated in different uh, residency programs, but how is it like? And how is the difference from your experience uh, in different places uh, before the pandemic and during this time? Uh, because now many art institutes or organizations, they temporarily hold or stop their physical activities, but you still uh, do your activities uh, in a residency program. Actually, we got lucky because uh, 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 a month ago, it was like, the case very low, like just one from coming abroad, and the government got caught at the uh, the hotel uh, and the quarantine center. But the uh, a week ago, the the uh, and the, our program already started before the the big event happened, which is last uh, last week. The, the two foreigners uh, see uh, they bribed the hotel security guard to go to the nightclub, and then <laughs> they, we found out that uh, most of them are positive COVID and it's been spread all over uh, already in Cambodia. About more oh, than hundred yeah. people just a few uh -huh. days. So um, I was like, oh, I'm now I'm on the island, and but how how is it to Asia now in Phnom Penh? It's gonna be like again. Uh, the most serious case now we have and for me like uh, uh, the places I've been it's all really inspire me it's like part of my life I met uh, a lot of different people and we exchange uh, you know like uh, experience life experience practical or technical even we do the art practice like yesterday I was doing the uh, a workshop with the the guests and the crew. Actually, I just found out, uh, and we always like to mix together. And I just found out, oh, the family is also is the Australian ambassador family, and I just feel like, oh, okay, uh, it's interesting. But uh, what I want to say is like, I'd say I, I uh, the five years old boy, and uh, we do demonstrate with the ink and the water and put it on the paper. I show him one side and then he, he do it and then he do it two side. And like, wow, interesting. I am really like uh, how this changing uh, experience or improve my way of uh, uh, being with the art also in life uh, with people cross paths uh, through my uh, residency program. Yeah. And, even in the quarantine center, yeah, it's I met a lot of friends there, so we keep in touch after that. So. 
Right. Mm. I think that's the beauty of being a, being a part of the registration programs that you can meet the people who live there. And even you just say that, that you can also learn. You, you are surprised by how the young, uh, the kids think about uh, dealing with the papers and colors. So uh, you, I hope that the good thing is at least your location is detached from many crowds. So I really hope that all the best to your program and hope that you can complete it safely. But um, now I have something else that I really want to ask you. Since the beginning of your artistic practice, you seem to be very interested in increasing people's awareness of the issues or problems, especially around the marginalized people, um, such as like uh, issues around women or girls or the ecological challenges to farmers or the prejudice onto the people suffering with uh, disease. Yeah, and then more recently, I understand that you concern also uh, concerned about like human and nature. So in that sense, your work seems to educate people to think together about how we can change our life and how we can contribute our society through your art. So do you consider the educational element or educational approach is important in your artistic practice? So by education, what I mean is not just, you know, teaching or providing knowledge or skill, yeah, but it's more about making awareness, yeah? So do you think that art should be educative so that the people can change the society in your perspective? Uh I think we, I can could say instead of education, we can shift to the words exchange, and uh, uh, it's also can say it's a uh, art can be a a reason or to open up the question around that matters, and yeah, let's uh, it's the opportunity open up and uh, with different perspective and different. Uh, a situation and environment happen and it's it's always change. It's like let's say uh, last year I, I have that uh, opinion here and there, but then next year it's gonna be different with different uh, environment and situations. And mm. yeah, and I, 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 uh, yeah, can. yeah, it's very good point that education is like questioning and open up uh, any possibilities or potentialities. And through the education, you mean maybe we have to actually look for the solutions or answers together that will be a beneficial for everyone because we, we, we are living all together in this world, yeah? So yeah, that, that's how I understand. So. Do you have anything to add uh, regarding the educational approach or this is uh, enough for you to answer? Mm. Yeah, I think it's uh, our watch run, run the workshop with uh, Sinta. It's also open up a uh, uh, new dynamic and people have the time and the moment to unhabit the habit and sense things in life in a different way yeah right open up the new perspective thank you so much uh tan watai yeah now, thank you now, yeah now we are going to move to the next artist and i'm going to pass the time to mr asif uh, thank you Ka -Jong -ok. uh i would like to a little bit uh having a discussion with sim uh, and uh, i think it was very uh, fascinating to see the uh, the picture uh, you you show us the shift uh, shift happen changing rel relationalities uh, and as we are uh, speaking now uh, in 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 the in the regards of the exhibition stores cross rising land uh, one of the very important uh, aspect in your work uh, reenacting memories with you is also its uh, relationality uh, and. Uh, you know the 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 people uh, the interaction uh, togetherness uh, at is very much uh, uh, 
like the core activities uh, apart from uh, the object in, in the in the in the exhibition. As as we experience more than a year already, uh, this pandemic situation has changed uh, a lot our uh, how 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 we live, uh, not only uh, daily life also as well as uh, as in in the artistic practices. And I wonder maybe my first question would be how do you see the the uh, future or maybe the uh, <laughs> the current or, or uh, development of uh, relational art uh, during the pandemic or even after the pandemic. Maybe I will start with that. Yeah, togetherness. Yeah, I think it's also interesting to see like what my concept of togetherness is and yours uh, it could be different. Uh, same with aesthetics. I have a different taste than yours. Um, or uh, even like the concept of love, yeah. If you talk about togetherness, like Rotai and me uh, are uh, are living a happy togetherness for years now, but her home is in Phnom Penh and mine is in Brussels. We have two homes, but that type of togetherness is not for everyone, right? So when thinking of an answer, I was like, oh, I cannot catch a fish uh for for what for you what you like but i like the fish but maybe you don't like it or you know kokyong's uh fishing rod i really like his idea as well but i was like how can uh how can we get more fishing methods uh which all have their own quality of fishing or to catch or be with and i am trying to see uh, also the role of the art scene that we can find different methods um, because to me, there are infinite possibilities of creating togetherness, still in the offline life, but even more, I think, options in online spaces. And I've been thinking about this a long time, even before COVID. And just last week, I realized like actually the biggest key or the biggest lock uh, in releasing those possibilities uh, is our mind. Yeah, like how limited is my mind and how limiting can my mind be? Uh, but how can I unlock my mind? So uh, there's this research that showed that if you give a paperclip to adults, they will come up with like these two functions for the paperclip, holding paper and pushing the SIM card out of the smartphone, right? Uh, but when you give this um, paperclip to four years old, they uh, come up with hundreds of possible ways uh, for the paperclip. And why is that? It's because their mind still goes in all directions where anything can be everything. So maybe we could observe preschool kids more. And of course, also artists are trained in, in creativity and um, it's good to look out for those artists you cannot understand and make you a little bit uncomfortable even. Uh, I've also seen that in the open source hackers community, uh, they're very interesting people. That's not only IT uh, people, yeah? You can also hack the paper clip, right? And open source is important because when, when I do a hack with two elements, I like Rotai, she takes two objects, she put them together and all of a sudden something else happens. And she is open to another person to hack on that. Maybe it can become something else. So I really like to look in the margins because um, these people, they are not always in the center of our society, right? artists, uh, small kids or, or hackers. And so I look for dropouts, you know, the misfits, the loner and outsiders. So if anyone out there feels like that's you, like come and look me up afterwards, right? And it's like the people who left school, who failed all types of exams, um, who struggle with systems, who get restless in the routines, because now it's their time to shine, I think, because they survived outside of this system somehow. And it's a system that's breaking down now. So in the arts, we just have to facilitate co-creative platforms where these kids and artists and hackers can come together. Uh, they don't need to listen to us, but we just mix them and let them play by themselves or, or if they want together. And that will bring more synergies to me. So let them freely experiment in, uh, what things can do. And they probably go out of our mind because we can't think of it, right? And it's easy to recognize. People call them weirdos, crazy, strange, unusual, queer, just because they move differently from anything else we've known. 
So giving back space to those people in our society and valuing them for exactly their different way of being, I feel is what we can all do also just in our daily, daily lives. Meet someone you don't understand and you'll have more understanding of what life all can be. And yeah, many more forms of togetherness will appear. Thank you, Sinta. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm sorry. I think I think that's uh, uh, that's also reflect on what we are uh, seeing in in the in the picture that you share. And actually, I, I have one uh, one small question. Maybe you can elaborate. Uh, uh, if you if, if we see on the on the left side uh, on the blue um, uh, picture, uh, there is a goal versus process orientation, and then on the green side, it is pace post and people orientation the, the process orientation versus goal uh, versus goal orientation is pretty much about the uh, uh, discuss in 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 in, in relate to the relational art for example uh, and how would you explain more about this uh, two different shift cinta i had a um, talk with a colleague uh, here and she she kind of like got confronted because she says i'm out of the goal orientation, but more into process still. And I said, yeah, but the process still goes to the goal, right? Uh, but pace orientation is actually being with everything and everyone, and then seeing what can happen. The process is not yet really defined how to work. Uh, I also think that everything in this world is not that bad. Uh, is just the speed with which we do things. So I really like Kopyong's idea of uh, understanding time very much. Are we taken by speed? Are we rushing into? When you have time, my question was, if time is no longer money, how would I relate differently to everything, to my environment, to uh, other people, to myself? If you have uh, time, how to say, if you take time, you don't even have to make Uh, decision. There's no deadline, actually. If you take more time, you don't even have to make a choice because you can take time for anything. You can go zigzag. So this relation with time, I feel, is something uh, I really relate to what Sulia has with the buffalo. You know, it, it, there's so many concepts that we have put in our body and we are racing. But if we put another relation with time, another relation with money, another relation with space, Many things can happen. So that's a bit why I say pause it sometimes and be with the people around and the pace, let everything in their own pace and things will come. Mm. I'm a very positive person, actually. In that <laughs> Thank you, Sinta. Uh, I just want to read one uh, comment from the audience. This is delightful. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you, Sinta. And now uh, I would like to ask uh, Ngelai, uh, I know that uh, sis. Uh, uh, I hope Ngai is here. Yeah, Ngai is here. Uh, I think we can continue to uh, to talk about uh, the current uh, activities uh, mm -hmm. or artistic practice uh, uh, in your side because I know that this is uh, this work uh, is um, ongoing project. Since 2012, yeah. and uh, I've seen uh, with Jomo as well uh, in Jogja Biennale before. Uh, maybe first question. It's very general question. Uh, how many how many work uh, so far uh, you have created for this for this series until now? So now I already done three three counts. Three. Yes. Is it is it specific on the? Uh, I mean, in, in the specific, uh, it's, it's based on the cities or countries? I just uh, curious. Based on the country. 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 Yeah, yes. This is the ongoing project. So that's why I give the title also Endless Group. Because I always continue when I have a chance to do create. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it. This is uh, something that we mentioned also before uh, regarding the situation mm -hmm. in Myanmar, and uh, yeah. I just heard from you that you are also actively involved. Uh, we hope that uh, you are, um, of course, doing fine, fine with the artist, artistic community there. And mm -hmm. I just very curious as well how uh, the artistic community respond to the uh, situation, the current situation in, in Myanmar. 
we saw like some solidarities uh, between yes. artists, communities, institution, even petition, something like that. Uh, but I would like to hear mm -hmm. more from you. Yes. Now, uh, we uh, mostly are contemporary art scene. So we try to uh, help to the CDM people because uh, some artists, they do buy their own uh, project and some artists, uh, we, uh, including me, so we're doing now the collective work because the, this right time now, so the, we try to help to the activist people because the now uh, a lot of the government office staff, so they doing the CDM movement. CDM movement uh, is the civil disobedient movement. So uh, they didn't go to the office and then also they didn't take their salary from the government. So they need a uh, salary. So in most of the artists in Myanmar now, we try to get the funding from us. So last, uh, 10 Feb we started 10 February. Uh, we did the artist street in the in the near the city hall in Yango, and then we did the art uh, creating in front of the street, and we sell in the arts at pieces, mostly the painting and also some uh, some small uh, sculpture, and then also some uh, poem, and then we did on the street, and we sell in on the street. And then when we got the money, so we support through the uh, organizations in the underground movement. So most of this time in most of the artists, we doing art practice like an underground movement. Hello? Hello? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Uh, do you want to continue, Nela? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, so I every day I I went to the to the downtown to march with the people in the demonstration, and then also I did record of the everyday images. Okay, thank thank you, Nela. Uh, we we are very much looking forward to see uh, the continuation of the of the of the work, and uh, yeah. uh, I think this is very much relate. Uh, uh, this, this this situation, I think, is pretty much related uh, in some places in Southeast Asia as well. And uh, I will continue to Maharani, which uh, will uh, which also present the work that uh, inspired by the narration about about this political upheaval uh, back to in Indonesia, uh, like uh, more than fifty years ago in in sixty five, and. Uh, I would like to ask Maharani about about uh, related to the process of uh, of uh, your uh, artwork. Uh, you said that uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, this work uh, is is research based, and and there was uh, notes uh, by your late grandfather, uh, and uh, that's that's not become uh, very important in your part of your research. Um, would would you mind to tell us a little bit uh, about your grandfather, Maharani? Maybe if you if you feel comfortable with that. Okay, uh, maybe I would like to explain for the category of the people who has been arrested uh, in the sixty five. Yeah, the based mass arrest. On, uh, based on the notes, yeah. Based yeah. based on the notes. Uh -huh. of based on the notes, so the mass arrest of the sixty five uh, were divided into three categories of people. The group A, uh, for those who were considered directly involved to the G30s as incident, they were immediately tri uh, tried and being sentenced or mostly being killed. And the group B, uh, for those who were considered active in supporting the or communist, uh, Indonesian Communist Party or other affiliated organization. And because of that, they were indirectly involved in the G30s. And were those who were brought to Buru Island without going through a judicial process on the pretext uh, that they will be fostered on islands so that they are ready to return uh, to being citizen of uh, Pancasila. And the group C, uh, for those who were considered to be members of the Communist Party or other organization without paying an active leadership role, were mostly sentenced to prison in various places 
uh, my grandfather was once in a group during that era. He was a very quiet person. He mostly told stories in his diary rather in uh, telling them directly. When you know that uh, he had attended an event from the Sarikat Guru or labor union with his background as a teacher who was active in building a school for Indonesian uh, people. But my investigation of what he was doing at that time is not finished yet. Uh, so the sure thing is that uh, when he tur- returned from uh, his detainee on Buru Island, uh, his children, uh, my father and um, my uncles, uh, agreed to keep the story from their uh, grandchildren what, that, what happened in Buru Island until uh, they were adults. Uh, and it is better known that grandfather had returned from his studies in the Netherlands until I figure out uh, in my uh, high school era junior yeah, yeah no no uh, high school era yeah i think uh, it's that's the intro for uh, my grandfather okay uh thank you rani uh and uh, i uh, uh i think you are uh, pretty much also explore uh with uh uh, the use of mediums in, in the work because uh, mm-hmm. basically this, this this story you created uh, in the form of books then explored to the installation uh, drawing as you I mean as your as your uh, uh, as as we know as also you as uh, uh, very much uh, a drawing artist as well as well as uh, mm-hmm. the re- recently I heard that uh, you uh, present this as a performing piece like yeah. you know <laughs> theatrical or something like that uh, would you like to Tell us a little bit more about that because because we we will we will, we will not uh, see that form in the exhibition. But yeah, we will ah, hear that. Okay, so I believe uh, using a folklore approach as a medium to tell something that was banned from the public uh, is a good understanding to pass on the story from generation to generation. So I developed my uh, story into various medium, a storybook that already translated into English, Korean, and Mandarin. Uh, and also a two-dimensional wall piece using uh, charcoal on wood uh, that illustrate uh, some of the story chapter and the three-dimensional puppet character using acrylic uh, on a wood as a property for a performance when it's needed. Uh, and also an island installation in a previous exhibition. So each uh, of the medium has its own function. I hope my story uh, with uh, various mediums could open another perspective to, of understanding events in the past. So during this uh, series, I did two uh, performances uh, with this work. The first one is with the three-dimensional uh, puppet that shows in so I did a collaboration with my friends. Uh, he's a storyteller and he reads uh, my storybook and then he developed uh, the first the first performance with the three uh, dimensional puppet and the second one was in 2020. Uh, we did a live streaming in with a good Institute of Bandung to perform a shadow puppet but still from this uh, story. Yeah, maybe you can uh, watch the performance in the Good uh, Bandung, uh, Good Bandung uh, IGTV <laughs> later. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Maharani, uh, for your uh, sharing. And I will uh, continue uh, with uh, Ka Jiong Ok. Uh, I will pass now the screen to Ka Jiong Ok to continue. Thank you very much, Mas Ase. Um, uh, hi, Solia. You wait for a long time. <laughs> Thank you so much for your patience. Um, it, it is very interesting to know about your personal experience in Japan, which I understand as a turning point of your life, as, as well as your artistic change or artistic shift, because you, you mentioned that you fight against prejudice or preconception about your own country or about your culture, right? And also, secondly, you left painting behind and then you decide to pursue, you know, something new, like a new form of medium for your artistic practice, which is a stop motion animation, right? So now I'm very curious Stop motion animation, as far as I understand, it takes 
uh, it's a time consuming. Yeah, it's time consuming. It takes a long time to build. And as an mm -hmm. animator, as an artist uh, slash animator, you even create every a single character shown in your work. Uh, so it is very exciting to see your craftsmanship, yeah, as well as how you arrange mm -hmm. the groups of characters and movement and shoot uh, the video. So how did you first, because before presentation, you didn't talk about how you first encounter stop motion animations uh, uh, from the beginning. And what is it that make you so fun of it? Why do you like it so much that you now want to focus on stop motion animation? So what's the strength in the stop motion animation as you deliver your message compare? You may compare with other traditional, other, other like or the medium that you used to practice. Mm -hmm. So if uh, talk to you about this is, I can say this is just the accident, you know? <laughs> Because uh, the, my, my beginner is uh, I start from painting. And uh, at that time when the Japan Foundation, they have the, the rule for, for uh, accept the artist to go to have the residency in Tokyo. They ask for the personality of the, the artist to go there. But I just thinking, like I said that, because in Laos at that time, is, we know art is only the painting and the sculpture. And, you know, when I was a child, I look at uh, Japanese animation. But this time, it's very good chance to go there. I will be in Tokyo, the land of the animation. So, and I just talk to them like, okay, this time I want to go there and do something else. It's not the painting. And uh, they asked me back like, do you have experience about the computer graphic or anything else about a video or, or animation? I said, no, nothing. But if you give me a chance to go there, I will do it in, in Tokyo during the time that I stay there. And then when they select me and they, they say, okay, we want to see the person who say start from the zero to become the something out in, in their land for the first time and they select me and I go there. You know, two weeks I go to, I stay in Tokyo and I do nothing. This is the, the real story. I do nothing because I don't know how to do anything. I don't know how to start. I don't know how to use the software in the computer. You know, <laughs> I, I have the, I don't know any, any experience about that, but they sent me to uh, visit, uh, they, they took me to the, uh, the animation school. It's very really small animation school near, nearby my, uh, re my uh, residency place. And they show me many kind of the animation, 3D, 2D, uh, most of the using the computer graphic. You know, I just, oh, that's good, that's nice. And then at the end, I saw something, wow, that is interesting. Because I pass in the, the room and they do the stop motion. And I just think, okay, stop motion is just the, you know, sculpture. I study that. I can do the, the sculpture and I think I can start my animation by stop motion. And then I back from that school and I start to, to think about how to start to do the animation. And again, I don't know how to start the story because I'm, I'm not the story writer, I'm not a filmmaker. I just thinking and I don't know, I don't have any idea and I start from myself. If you see my first work, I just do, every uh, single picture by creating myself with the buffalo is my friend. And I do the stop motion, only one, just only me. And the story is nothing, it's just how uh, Mr. Surya with the buffalo friend go out from this room. <laughs> That's the first idea. So I don't have the, the, the script. Every single uh, walk of the animation of my of my uh, character is from the real situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 is the, the turning point. And when when I start to do it, I I I found that it's really fun to to experiment the new way of uh, working. And one thing in my mind, I have uh, is it always told me, you already say. Surya, you already said you will do the animation in this 
country before you go back to Laos. So that is make me have to finish it. <laughs> this is the, you know, it's something I, I tied my, 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 myself to, to, the, to do that. And at the end, I got the work. And many people, they impressed with the thing that I do. And I just want to continue this. I want to learn more about uh, how to uh, develop the quality of the work. And the, because at the, first, at the first time when I used the material clay, you know, in Japan, they don't have any English letter in the, in, the, in the thing that you want to buy. I had to guess this one, this, this, this and I, I buy the wrong clay. <laughs> that's the funny thing is that clay is they used to make this it's not for the stop motion but you know you already buy it you have to finish it so and then when when i came back to Laos, i tried to find another material and i found the new material by accident again you know uh i don't know you know about the, the clay dough that they make the flower Make the, the fake flower, yeah. I stole that from, from my wife. And I, I, so I already married when I gave it back. <laughs> okay. And I start to do that. And I, I, I like the, the using clay to make the stop motion because it uh, likes uh, me to my shine hose. When I wear the shine, we stay very normal life in, in the right field. We, we play with the ground, we play with the uh, you know, very, very simple. So I want to use this material to, to, to be another form of the clay. And even I, until now, I become the another thing. Many people say to me, I become higher than before, but the clay that I used to make the buffalo is always told me that you come from clay. So don't forget to, to, uh, to be that. Yeah, this is uh, the yeah very impressive so Leah and I think your experience your story yeah it's really proves that there are always the moment of life changes and I think why it is possible for you is maybe because you are kind of person who can take a risk very venturous right <laughs> you are not afraid of uh, doing something that you never experienced before. And uh, you're also an educator, you teach in school. So maybe you also had uh, many chances to share about your story to encourage to the younger generation in your country. Because before, during the presentation, you also talk about the problem of the conflicts uh, between the different generations. Yeah. Uh, so, um, do you have some, yeah. some expectations from the younger audience or the audience who wants to be a stop motion animator or the artist uh, who may view your animations? Can you give us some, some words for them? Uh, I mean, for, for in, the, in the beginning, I think it's feel like, a, hello? Yes. Is okay for the internet? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, good, good. Hello, did you hear? Yes, we can hear. Can you hear me? So I think I have a problem of the connection. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Is that, you is can that hear? Enough? Yeah, we can hear you, Surya. Yeah. Okay, okay, so okay. May yeah. Maybe for the last words, maybe you can give some encouraging words to the younger uh, generations uh, who may view your animation and also who learn about yeah, your I mean, experiences. You know, when, uh, when, when the first time when I getting back and I show and I share this idea, I share this animation to, to the people. Of course, it's very exciting for the people. They don't know how uh, it's going on. How, how, how can I make it? But the, some of the people, some of the new generation, they, they can access the uh, internet. They can access uh, many medium, they laughing at that work. But for me, I, I try to, to uh, ex ex express my, my, my feeling to, to them like, uh, you can do anything that you like, even if it will be just a leaf, just a wood, just a clay, or just a simple thing in your life that you used to. You can make change if you have an 
the new idea for, for that. It's not, it's not just only, okay, you look at uh, Hollywood, you look at the Disney uh, animation, you look at the Japanese animation, and you have to follow them. You can get the idea from them, you can inspire from them, but don't forget to be yourself if you want to do anything. But it's not easy. It's not easy because, you know, in Laos is very, I, I think not, not only in Laos, in the, in the undeveloping country, the most important thing for the new generation or the people, they think about the, the income or the outcome when you do the work. So if I do, because in, 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 the, first, uh, in the first year when I, start, when I came back and I start, I don't have any income for that work. So that one, the big, big uh, case that they don't follow, they don't want to become the artist like this, they continue their painting. But the year after, you know, my life is changing because I can bring the art to education. So if you, if you follow uh, uh, some, some of my uh, CV, you will see I become the, the consultant of the very big project for the first Lao Children Tree program. And they use my buffalo to be the, the, the main character for, for that. I have to fight with the government because the buffalo is mean stupid. But in the program, I use the buffalo to teach the children. So, and that, that, uh, that thing is make change to my life. And many people, they said, oh, buffalo is also good. So now we can do anything with the frog, with the chicken, with the... So now I have a lot of students in the, in the university. And they also very, if I, I say like the generation, they are so strained because they can use their own opinion to show the, to show the, the, the other and they don't care about what they think. But just in my class, I mean. <laughs> But this is a, the, 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 the good opportunity to, to, to change your life and show them is more than you talk to them how they have to change. You have to show them that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Solia. Uh, and now I think we are already past so, uh, our schedule. So we have to move to the question and answer session for the audience. Uh, now I'd like to pass the time to uh, Mr. Asep, please. Terima kasih. Uh, thank you, Jung Ok. Uh, so I think this is this is uh, a good a good uh, uh, time also to a little bit continue with Sulia because we have a, a question for Sulia and then we will go through another question. So there is a question from uh, Ziada Ziad here uh, for Sulia. Uh, it says that uh, many philosophers say when artists write, take picture, it means they are writing the culture and the history of people. What kind of cultural and historical lesson uh, that you uh, put in your work? I think yeah, you, can see, you can see also the question, uh, right, Asulia? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So ac actually, um, the, 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 the flow is just the only one part of my, my Buffalo work. Because I, I also do many kind of, uh, of work like about, uh, the, the photography and the video, and I also use the symbolic of the buffalo. So for me, I, I use this because the buffalo and the boy is represent the, the history of my life. It represents the history of Lao. Even if, if, you, if I compare it with the, uh, the big city of the Chinese, they're building now. So when I took this, I want to uh, stick the, the, how to say that? I want to, to, to stick like something on to the, to the new thing that will be happen in the future to, to keep the history, to keep the, it's really hard huh, for me to, to speak in that. It's like a, okay. Let's say in the, in, in the figure or in the character itself, it's showing the, the, the culture. When I'm showing that, it's, it's showing we are from the agriculture country. So this is the, the history of our country. So when, the, when you grow up or when you uh, change to a, another society, 
like a loud you became now, but you can be something or they can accept you or not, but it's up to you if you want to still continue for, for keeping that in, in your life. Because nowadays, uh, when, when the society is, is growing, is growing, I worry about the new generation is not have the same idea with, with our generation. They, they forgot their culture, they forgot their, their life before. They're just thinking, okay, this is the future of us. We don't care about uh, where we're from. We just want to be the, the another thing. But for my work, I just, this is for my, per, my personal, I don't know they will accept that or not, but I want to continue this. I, I don't know, is, is <laughs> answer the, the question? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the for the answer. I think um, I think that's explore and also uh, elaborate the, the the answer even more. I think. Thank you very much. And uh, I have another question. I, I know we have very limited time, so we will choose maybe uh, some of the question. There is question from uh, this is anonymous attendee. So uh, hi everyone, is there a difference to how you think about your work exhibiting in Indonesia? Uh, does your work take on different meanings in Southeast Asia or do you see difference in how your work is interpreted in this context uh, to other global presentation? Uh, I would like to hear maybe from Lim Kok Yong uh, before, before answer that question. Uh, Kok Yong, uh, how many times you, you exhibited your work in Indonesia uh, till now? Hello, Kokyong. Hello, and, hi. Yeah, hi. because I, I know some some of the artists has been exhibited in Indonesia before. Uh, can, can you maybe answer this question first before I go to the other artists? Yeah, uh, this is. I'm not sure whether this is counted uh, as an because uh, I I was not literally involved in the the whole process of setting up the exhibition. But uh, if this is counted, uh, this is my first time exhibiting it in uh, 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 Indonesia, actually. Um, uh, for many reasons. One is because uh, it's, 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 it's my neighbor. And, uh, you know, because it's so close, we always take it for granted. We just say, you know, one time I will go there. One time I will go. <laughs> one day it will happen. One day it will happen. But it never happened. <laughs> Um, yeah, there were several occasions in the past uh, where I was invited as well, but for some reasons, uh, it, it did not take place. So uh, officially, this is considered as the first time. Um, yeah, uh, as much as I wanted to respond to the local community in Jakarta um, and also the neighborhood around the museum as well, uh, uh, sadly speaking, uh, this time around, I don't actually have the the uh, I'm not allowed to explore uh, this 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 kind of uh, a model of experimentations, um, you know, working with uh, the, the the community and so on. So yeah, uh, even though the work was was actually uh, conceptualized as a site specific project, um, in the first uh, version when I exhibited in UK. Um, I was literally fishing yeah, from the third floor of the building. So the fishing rod was taken out from the windows in the gallery and it go down all the way from the third floor to the riverside. So like the Buffalo men, everybody was laughing at me, you know, all the angler at the riverside, they were like laughing like, what are you doing? You know, it's, you're not going to get a fish or things like that. Um, but I, I, I managed to catch a fish and I pulled that fish up uh, and all the way, uh, in the first installation, there was, there was a tank. There was a fish tank. Uh, the tank was a symbol of uh, chance and possibility. Yeah? Um, we know that you know, uh, it's really uh, a mission impossible, uh, but the, the, uh, there's still a hope. Yeah? The chance of a fish being caught and pulled up Hello, Kokyo. Is anyone can hear Kokyo or it's only me? Cannot hear Kokyo. Okay, we so uh, it's freezing. Oh, okay. Um, 
Yeah, we will continue to cock up maybe a little bit later. And uh, the, the the second artist that I would like to ask about this question is actually Sinta. I know uh, that uh, this idea of interpretation and also uh, mm -hmm. meanings also what... Now, nah, uh, Kokyong, sorry, uh, you, you, you're you back. So you, maybe... Sorry, sorry, I got disconnected. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. Uh, yeah, where was I? I was talking about the chance and uh, the, the tank as a whole. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's, that's how I, I, I connect with the neighborhood, uh, like, you know, creating a situation for people to respond, even making myself as a laughing stock, you know. Uh, but that's where um, communications happen. So eventually the local anglers and the, the, the people who fish along the river, they, they come up to see what I was actually doing in the gallery. And uh, that's where, um, yeah, at that time I was very much uh, influenced by relational arts. So I want to bring, you know, live, um, actual live events into the gallery to challenge the notion uh, and also the functions of a museum, uh, gallery, and institution. Yeah. Thank you, Kokyo. Uh, so I will continue with uh, with with Sinta, as I previously mentioned, uh, because apart from uh, the idea of uh, uh, meanings, context, and also reinterpreting uh, uh, it works, you have also uh, personal histories with the country, with Indonesia, uh, in your family. So how, how would you reply to this, this question in, in, uh, from your side, Simba? I think it's always nice to come back um, to, to places that, that, that hold meaning, but then also change those meanings and multiply it. So it's always nice to have a reason to come back to Indonesia. I've been sent from when I was really small, maybe before one year old, to show to my grandparents and so I have this relation for a, a while, not as much uh, in art context. I kind of wanted to keep Indonesia as a place of family and, and, and maybe friends. Um, but I also did Penchak Silat, for example, which was a form, again, a manifestation that I really started to understand through the body. For me, the body is also important, how the body moves and relates. And as for the work that we had to kind of contextualize for uh, Machan, I think it was because we live in a globalized um, times where uh, Jakarta is maybe, you know, not so different from uh, what, what, what happens in Brussels uh, in certain sense, because it's much bigger as well. It's like completely different. But for us, I think it was the context of a museum that um, we, we liked it in Gallery Nacional Indonesia that in Mutual Unknown, the exhibition that I met Watai in, um, all the conditions changed. We could, you know, normally you can't touch the artwork, uh, you know, but there you could like uh, touch the artist and, and, and speak with the curators because they were all in that space. So we really liked, uh, I think, that experience and want to bring this reenactment of what we already have lived uh, at one point in Jakarta, also into the installation uh, in Machan, where the uh, visitors can come in and, and, and in, in our case, they can even write on the white wall of the uh, museum, right? And maybe it's, it's interesting to hear from your uh, point of view, because when we deconstruct things and do things out of the conventions of uh, 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 the museum, how does it work for you? It, it can get uncomfortable or, you know, you have to think about security and how, how do you control or not or let people relate with art. So for me, it's, it's interesting also to know how for museums and institutions that want to, um, that have a certain way of presenting art, uh, how this process for you goes. Like when an artist like, hey, let's just try to do everything different. Yeah, I think this is uh, maybe uh, it, if I reflect on the process of our, our process of exhibition making uh, since the uh, pandemic situation began, uh, not only just a single exhibition, I think the whole process of uh, uh, instituting, I think uh, we, we very much uh, rethink all of that. Uh, and this is a learning process for us and also for me, of course. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, sometimes... Uh, 
uh, sometimes we fail, sometimes we uh, succeed. Maybe uh, we, we we only know maybe in the future. But but for me, until now, it's been a learning process. Not only working like specifically with um, relational art type of uh, practice, but also how to save to the digitalization, how to create uh, content, how to dig uh, deep in our uh, research process before to, to make available for the public. I think that's the whole process uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, <laughs> that in our uh, current reality, I mean, uh, a lot of uh, discussion, of course, online, uh, try to rethink this kind of practice, but specifically as an institution that uh, pretty much uh, needs to think uh, uh, structurally uh, a little bit more maybe than the other, and also how to seek uh, the, the uh, information, the regulation from the government, waiting again, again, the idea of waiting, this uncertain time. I think that's part of our uh, process as well. So yeah, let's see, maybe in the one year, two year, maybe uh, who knows when, when this pandemic ends, but. I regard this process as a learning process as well for us. I mean, not only as a person, in, on a personal level, but also as an institution. Same, same. I think yeah. there's, for us, it's like, I yeah. feel good, right? Let's just feel good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, yeah, I think it's heaven everywhere. And, and uh, yeah, we, we talk about uh, colleges in, in, in our, uh, in, in other institutions as well. They, they face like similar situation. <laughs> hey, thank you for everything and uh, you know bearing with us as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sita, for the answer. And I will move to the question for Maharani. Uh, so, uh, so it's quite a long a question, but I I will just uh, a short the the question. <laughs> uh, I think you can also read uh, uh, Maharani, but uh, the point is that uh, or the question is that uh, as an artist. Why did you pursue mm -hmm. just this theme uh, of your work? A lot of people say <laughs> choosing this theme <laughs> is a great to attention uh, to attention global. Okay, okay. Uh, half of the century of T Turkey as uh, historiography from 65 to 2020 can be divided into two periods. For me, uh, the first period is uh, about debate how to how who was the and the G Turkey as hello. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, okay. Sorry, I will change it first. Okay, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so how about uh, the first period is about uh, debate about who was the mastermind behind the G thirty eight. Was it the Communist Party or just internal a war between the army or geopolitics from another country? And the second period is the New Order uh, era was fully in power, uh, a monopoly on history, only one version that was allowed to be known uh, by the public and uh, studied by students. And the third period is the fall of the new order era marks the emergence of a complete narrative about the events of the G30As. So I choose this theme to find out about uh, the thing that I didn't know for sure, especially what my grandfather did back then that caused his period of life in uh, Buru Island by comparing his micro history, uh, my uh, grandfather diary, and macro history with the government or an other perspective. Uh, for this work, I'm not uh, talking about who is the mastermind of the evil, but more to, to the impact uh, uh, and the story from the victim's uh, perspective, especially in uh, Buru Island. So more than uh, 11,000 people were forced, forced uh, transport to Buru Island without trial for a period more than 10 years. In Buru Island, they labor from dawn to sunset, even at night. Uh, to build a farmland uh, and serve uh, other service for the guard um, without being paid. Uh, I think the president can some like to have to uh, rehabilitate uh, their domain because lots of them could not find a job after they tried in Blue Island, maybe until now. Uh, in 20, uh, 2015, there's an inter International People's Tribunal in Den Haag for this uh, Indonesian 65 events, and it resulted in several decisions that were suggested for the government 
uh, to be made to the victim of the 65 event, but it never happened until now. Uh, in the 60s uh, era, there were about 11,000 people that after the Buru, uh, it had been more than half of century, of course, uh, in 2021. Uh, they are on the average of their 60s age, and now perhaps only a handful, handful of people that are uh, still alive. However, there has been no uh, definite action from the government to resolve this problem. So for me, it is important to continue to speak up about this matter until the government admit uh, its mistakes in the past and change the explanation about the 65 event in the elementary storybook. Okay, uh, Rani, mm -hmm. thank you very much for the, uh, do you, uh, is that, and your uh, answer, Marani? Yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. all. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Marani. Because we we a little bit lost uh, your uh, your speak before. Uh, I think it was freezing, but but uh, we got the whole point. I think I hope uh, that answered the question. And uh, now we passed uh, three p.m. and uh, I will have uh, another one question. Uh, unfortunately, uh, of course, we have uh, like more than uh, one uh, until now, uh, or there are three, but but we need to choose one of them and uh, Ka Jong Ok will uh, answer uh, the next question. So Ka Jong Ok, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Asset. So the last questions that we are going to answer uh, is from Mr. Faras. Let me uh, read the question first. Hi, Korean mission to ASEAN here. Thanks for interesting presentations. We are wondering if today's presentations will be reflected on the exhibition at Matsan. If so, how would this be in art forms? Very good question, but I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> uh, um, today's presentation do reflect do reflect uh, on the exhibitions that is already uh, uh, already prepared and displayed at Matam Museum because um, uh, the presentation is about an extended explanation about the work that we exhibit in the museum. And also throughout the presentation, artists have shared and discussed about their inspirations of their artistic practices for so for for some uh, it, it was a historical moment and for some it is very invisible or intangible concept like time or uh, or togetherness and care so uh, today's presentation uh, definitely relates to what is being shown in the museum unfortunately the gallery physically has not been open yet but um, yesterday, we just had a launch of the video introduction of the exhibition, uh, and then it's already in the YouTube channel of the Museum Matan. So if you, after today's presentation, uh, uh, I really hope that you can check out the video introduction so that you can have a, a better understanding about how the art, artwork is presented and what kind of medium is used um, so it will be very helpful. And also whole um, presentation uh, today has been uh, live streaming in YouTube as well in Museum Matjam uh, YouTube channel. So if you want to, if you miss the first part or some parts throughout the talk, uh, I encourage you to go back uh, to YouTube channel and uh, have a look again. So I hope uh, I answer to the question, and if we are allowed to uh, make another art form uh, that convey what we discussed today, I think that would be great. Maybe Mr. Asif and I can create <laughs> something. Uh, we don't know yet. Maybe we can create something and then uh, display next to one of the artwork in the museum. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Jamok. I think we are. Uh, in the end of the session. Uh, thank you very much for everyone uh, for your attention and staying until the end. Uh, 
we reach uh, like about uh, almost 90, like 88 uh, at peak for the participant. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you also for all the artists, uh, Watai, Sinta, Sulia, Maharani, Kokyong, and Yelai, who have shared the stories behind the artistic practices, and, uh, which is very informative and helpful for us uh, to understand the artwork in the exhibition. And uh, now I will uh, pass again to Widi as MC. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Asep. Thank you so much also, Ms. jung -ok for moderating the whole uh, program today. Also, thank you very much to our uh, artists, uh, Kokyong, uh, Maharani, Wotai, and Sinta, and Husulia, and Nilai for joining us today and sharing all your experience and as answering all the questions from our viewers today. I hope it will give uh, inspirations to our viewers on maybe they will be more interested looking into the, uh, our respective, uh, your respective country's history and what's the, uh, the current uh, events that is happening over there. Okay, so again, I'd like to thank uh, ASEAN and ASEAN Foundation and ASEAN Corp Korea Corporation Fund to help us to produce this webinar and the exhibition as well. So as uh, Ms. jung -ok said just now that we already released the in exhibition introduction on YouTube, please check it out when you have time. And please look forward to our other releases about the stories of Across the Lysing Lands exhibition. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>